praise and glory is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. For He died on the cross for our sins. Oh, I love Him. Please accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. He died on the cross for your sins, and He loves you more than anything. Please turn to Him with all your heart and soul, please. I'm going to be reading Psalms. Psalm, 106 Psalm, 106 from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. I'm going to take this up to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for the Holy Spirit as your teacher. And please read your Holy Word. And please don't take the Mark of the Beast, which is that magication potion. And I'll be back. Oh, sorry, I want to say... I don't know why I want to waste my time. <clears throat> and uh, let's continue. Psalm 106. The psalmist extorted extol us to praise God. Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord, who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thy inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up. So he led them through the depths as though the, as through the wilderness. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. And now, this reminds me of two things. One, remember when uh, Moses and the, and the children of Israel, the Israelites, crossed the Red Sea, God opened it up and let them cross it. Well, what happened to their enemies that were chasing them, the Egyptians? The water fell on them. And there wasn't any of them left. Now, go back, even further back, and go back to the times of Noah. What happened to the children of Canaan and to all those who bought into wickedness, except for, the, except for Noah and his family that were in the ark? What happened? The rains came. The masculine waters came down. The feminine words came up. And the world was flooded. And the waters covered their enemies. And there was not one of them left. God's going to do the same thing, but this time with fire. They believed they his words. They sang his praise. They soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lust exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron, the saint of, God, of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed up Dantan, and covered the company of Abraham. Bram. And the fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wigid. The flame burned up the wigid. And that's what's going to happen. All the tares are going to be thrown into the fire. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. They forgot God, their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. Which amazes me. Uh, God parted the Red Sea. <laughs> God had did all those amazing works. The three days of darkness... The death of the firstborn, the frogs, the flies, the river turning to blood. And they forgot all that and started, started worshipping a molted image of calf. 
wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said that he would destroy them had not, had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. And understandably, God was probably very, very angry because he did all these mighty works for them and spared them and got them out of slavery and out of bondage out of Egypt. And they were stiffening up their necks and hardening up their hearts against them after all he'd done for them. Kind of reminds me of like, a, here's just a little example. You got a dad and, and a child. And the dad, you know, does all these things for his child, you know, gives him food, clothing, you know, even takes him to, you know, to, you know, to the park, all these things. And the child rebels against him and speaks blasphemy and shakes her, shakes her fist at him and throws the food on the floor and does all these things. What do you think is going to happen to that dad? He's going to get poofy, isn't he? He's going to get mad and angry and that child's going to have a time out. But it's on a grander scale here. Almighty God did all these wonders for the Israelites. All these wonders got them out of bondage out of Egypt. Had them help them cross the Red Sea, part of the waters. Did all this work and amazing wonders for them. And he was taking care of them in the wilderness, even giving them angels food to eat. Did all these things for them and they kept stiffening up and hardening their necks against them. And rebelling against him. And, <laughs> and God is slow to anger, but yeah. I can understand him from, from, from that point of view. <laughs> Ye, they despised the pleasant land. They believed not his word, but murmured in their tents and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations and to scatter them in the lands. They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor, and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Yeah, it kind of reminds me, like, you don't want anything to do with the sacrifices of the dead. And you don't want to eat anything or take anything off of um, the people place in front of gravestones to nowadays. That's wrong, and it's, it's, it's an old saying, don't bring dead home with you. It's an old word that my grandmother used to say, do not bring, de bring the dead home with you. So if there's flowers sitting there at someone's grave, don't bring that home. You don't bring that home. You do not do that. And don't eat the sacrifices of the dead. Don't have anything to do with any of it. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions, and the plague break in upon them. And then soon, and then stood up Phileas, and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed. And that was counted unto him for righteousness, and to all generations forevermore. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes. Because they provoked his spirit, so that he spoke unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. They didn't. And that's one of the reasons why they're having problems today. Because they didn't follow God's word. They didn't destroy the, the nations whom the Lord commanded them. Like the present day uh, Palestinians were originally, from what God has taught me, is the, were the Philistines. But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. They mingled themselves among them and learned their works, learned the evil works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. And the year they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. And nowadays, people are sacrificing their daughters and their sons to the altar. What was the words I was going to say? The altar of convenience. That was it. The altar of convenience. The altar of convenience. The altar of convenience. Like, here's an example. Um, you have a, a young young girl. She grew up atheist. And, uh, you know, has been messing around with the opposite gender. And is in college. And next thing you know, she's going to have a, a baby. But instead... 
on the altar can sacrifice that child to the altar of convenience, which is so, so sad and so, so wrong. It is so sad. And there's some people doing it just so they can try to keep their body image better, you know, keeping so they won't lose their, you know, their, their thin, nice shape and their chest won't sag and all this, all this garbage. Vanity. Vanity is fleeting. It is the wind. It's like chasing after the wind. You can never stay young and perfect forever. You're going to grow old. No matter how much you try, you're going to grow old. And, um, it is wrong. It is wrong. And it's so much like the days of, uh, the days before the flood, because it does say that in the Book of Enoch, how women would, you know, would, would do things like take potions and stuff to make sure they wouldn't be able to have children so they could, you know, retain their figures for a much longer period. It says that in the Book of Enoch. But yeah, it's so wrong. It is so wrong to, to do things like that. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrifice unto, idol, unto the idols of Canaan. And the, and the land was polluted with blood. And if so, it is here. And it's not just Mystery Babylon the Great. It's all the nations of this world. They are polluted with, with blood of, of so many people sacrificing on the altar of convenience. Which is so wrong. Thus, thus were they defiled with their own works, and went a whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hands of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel, and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless he regarded their, uh, their affliction when he heard their cry, and he remembered them, remembered for them his covenant, and repented according to the multitude of his mercies. He made them also to be pitied, of all those that carried them captives. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say Amen. Praise ye the Lord. And I'll be back as... The Lord leads. That's what I was going to say earlier. I don't know why I was going to say that. But um, I'll be back as the Lord leads. And thank you for listening. Please accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. He died on the cross for your sins. And he loves you more than anything. Please let him in. He is knocking at the door of your heart. He paid your sin debt. So you don't have to go to the lake of fire. And no matter how great your sin debt is. He loves you more than anything. And no, you don't have to pay your own sin debt. There are some people who believe in that. Or you have to do all these fastings and, and do all these things. You don't have to go through all that. And first off, no matter how many times we fast, even if we fasted 180 days, it's not going to pay our sin debt. No matter good works, no matter any of it, won't pay our sin debt. Even if we throw ourselves in prison and, and put ourselves in torture camps, it's still not going to make any difference. It's not going to pay our sin debt. Our blood cannot. Only the Lord Jesus Christ's blood is, for it's pure, spotless, and blameless. Just like in the beginning of, of in the Old Testament, in the beginning of the Bible, they sacrificed, you know, lambs. Perfect, uh, perfectly, perfect lambs, or one spotted, perfect, unblemished lambs. They sacrificed them for their sins. They placed their hand on them and put their sins on that lamb, and the lamb was sacrificed. The Lord Jesus Christ was that lamb. He's the Lamb of God. He was sacrificed for our sins. His, his blood was, his precious blood was shed for us so we can go to heaven. And he loves us more than anything. And he's holding out his hand for us. And please accept him as your Lord and Savior and turn to him with all your heart and soul. He loves you more than anything. And he's knocking at the door of your heart. Please let him in. Please let him in. And I'll be back as the Lord leads.